something to the When he wants to do your hair, he does it the best of his ability, and what he thinks will look the best on you. Do you know something? About 99, 100 percent of the time, it comes out right. So if you're looking for that special hairstylist, I might suggest that you just go in one time, and I will guarantee to you that if you go in one time to Frederick's in Sherman Oaks, you will be satisfied from then on out. Bel Air service with Sherman Oaks prices. You can't beat that. That's uh, right on Ventura Boulevard at Van Nuys Boulevard. Frederick's Coiffures. We'll be back now with Mr. Bob Crane from KNX Los Angeles. Well, we're not. He is. This is Spectra Broadcasting Incorporated. And this is KVFM, the Valley's finest music station in San Fernando. This is Basil Rathbone. Behind the Iron Curtain, millions of people like you and me are being saturated with propaganda by the communist regimes. Trapped and disheartened, they are told only what the communist bosses want them to hear. If you believe the truth has a way of winning against any odds, even against an iron curtain, I urge you to support Radio Free Europe through the Crusade for Freedom. Send your true dollars to Crusade for Freedom. Care your local postmaster. From high atop the world, with the beautiful blue Pacific on one side and the vast San Fernando Valley on the other, KVFM is presenting the Del Moore Show. Dell's guest tonight, John Forsyth, Lyle Talbot, Joni Blackman and Joby Baker, and Bob Crane. And now here he is, his honor the mayor, Bob Crane. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ben. <laughs> here you are, of Tarzan. Yeah, well, you? you didn't mention that before. You're saying this is your mayor speaking to you well, from high atop I'm the hill. Sorry about that. I, I think this whole whole thing is a phony. This is this the, is really a backdrop. Why don't you be honest? You're not really on a hill. You're uh, down at Hody's. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this I'm thing was up on the hill. It was one rain. And we're that's on all it's going to take to bring it down there. That's right. I keep telling them that one of these days we'll be doing it from Ventura Boulevard. You know, we almost moved up here. We about two years ago we were looking at this Hawaiian modern down the street. Yeah. The the uh, the one that's going to have the freeway in back of it. Oh. And we didn't know this. You know, we came up here and said, "What a great view!" Wow, we were we were view happy then. Yeah. You know, you go through that when you're out here. Being from back east, we had only been out here a couple of years, <laughs> and we we went through the view bit. And we uh, uh, got this house, and this uh, man is saying, now, here, it's $56,000. Whoops. And at the time, I think I had uh, 500 in the bank, but I didn't <laughs> tell him. You know, that's the thing. You're on radio. You're like me. Here. Now you've got 1000 You've been saving. So anyway, uh, we're, we're going through this whole thing. Like We couldn't afford nothing. You know, we could afford yeah. maybe a tract home. It's nice to look at them, though. We're looking, and he's saying 56000 I said, it's a little bit high. He says, 48. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my first experience with a real estate man out here. And, and I said, uh, no, a little bit high. So he said, 43. And I said, well, it's still high. You know, we were like looking in the 25 oh. class. And he said, uh, what, would, what would sound good to you? And I said, th named a figure, 39. And he said, you, you've got it. And he started 58. 58. And I said, there's, uh, there's got, it's Golly. the truth. That's got to be something wrong. So we went into the house and started looking it over again. We realized that there was no, and this is terrible because the, these people are probably your neighbor. They're, they're only down here, you know. It's all right. But Could they be yeah. listening? Oh, we, we hope so. They might as well know it. We found out there was no place in the house to eat. What do you mean? No really? Place to eat? No. Do you have some place to eat in this house? 
I mean, this is a pretty big... I haven't seen the rest of it. Well, right there is the dining room, right there. You oh, have a dining room? Yeah. This house had no, no dining room. A big kitchen with all the modern conveniences. They had put so many electrical things into the house, there was no room to eat. Oh, that's... Brilliant. You know, you could make a terrific meal. You could have squab under glass, For all these things. out. Uh, and then you'd have to take it out in the yard. You don't <laughs> eat her out in the car. You know, you take it down the holdies oh, again. Oh, that's beautiful. By the way, I have a deal with them tonight. I was wondering, you, you, you're you in pretty good. You're in pretty good there for I ate there the snoon time. Oh, uh, The right. ping and all. Yeah. No, so anyway, that was one of the things. No place to eat. Another thing, we went into the bedroom, and we noticed that the back, I don't know what you call it, uh, part of the bathroom fixture, mm -hmm. the let out, I guess you would call the it. What? The what? The, the, uh, the uh, back of the, the, uh, the, you know. The toilet plunger, is that what you're trying yeah, to but say? The back, it's not the plunger, the thing oh. in the back of the bowl. Oh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the let the, out. The thing in the back, yeah, that you're it's leaning against. outside the house. Yeah. It was in yeah. the bedroom. It was in the bedroom. In the bedroom. I said to the guy, what is with the, what this... I don't want any guy three o'clock in the morning coming to clean my lead out, you know, or whatever you call that thing. <laughs> like the old Bickerson bit. I don't want no guy messing around with my esophagus at two o'clock in the morning. And he said, well, you put a little receptacle, that make it look like a phone, put a little thing over, you know, and all this crazy thing. And then the topper of all, we were at a dinner one night and some people said, oh, you're looking at the Hawaiian modern. Did they tell you about the freeway? <laughs> and I said, what freeway? And they said, well, that's the reason why they're having trouble selling the house. The freeway is going to go right in back of that place down that's there. That's why there's no room for a dining room. <laughs> yeah, no, open your door at every night to let the trucks come the through. Car, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was pretty. We never did move up here. We finally went to Tarzana, and then they made me honorary mayor. And I'm, uh, you know, it's and, the story of my life. That's by way of introduction. Good evening, Bob. Uh, what How show is this again? Yeah, who knows? We, we're just here every Saturday. You had uh, quite a good... Do you usually get this many people to come out? We, up here on you the mean hill? the guests? Oh, it's fantastic. You mean the, the, you mean the on the air guests or just yeah, folks? Yeah, the on the folks. Uh, oh, yes. All these people. Oh, yes, yes. We, uh, tonight we, were, uh, we had a little more than usual. Usually we have, well, let's see, Bobby Troop last week, uh, Jim Backus. Well, don't they just and live up here? Isn't this uh, no, a little Bel Air? People, no, here? no. Uh, you see, Bel Air is only three minutes from here, right over I the see. hill. And uh, most of the people that we've had on do live in Bel Air, the Bel Air section, except now Royal Woods. We're doing, we, we draw pretty good from those folks. Steve Allen right over here. Uh, Gail Storm we had on with us. Uh, of course, that's where Bobby Troop with Julie London, they live over there too. But we've been pretty lucky, and I'll tell you why. It's not that I'm so delightful, you know, that they, well... I was going to say, you, there must be a drawing card, <laughs> yeah. you know. You Who was here for first? It, yeah. <laughs> no, it's because I believe that I, for so long, did this television thing, you know, and, yeah. and people say, yeah. well, you, you've got to be seen, you know. So they feel that I wouldn't insult them or wouldn't hit them in the face or wouldn't ask them anything that would uh, embarrass them. Yeah. And two, they come into your home. It's now... I'll bet you $50 had I asked you to come out to the station. I don't care how pretty the building is. You would have said, well, gee, Dell, I'd love to do it. But, you know, I, it's one of those things. I know I would have said that. Yeah. But since now, if you'd invite me over to your show, your house, to your show, well, see, I think we I'd don't... go for curiosity just yeah. to see what the house looks like. Well, you know? to tell you the truth, that's why we're here tonight. That's it. I knew that. <laughs> I knew it all the time. My wife said, can I go see his house? As a matter of matter. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you started out of here four times ago, you know, to get away. You've seen the house you wanted to leave. That's, That's right. why I had to hurry to get you on the show. Let's talk a moment about the, your show. You're on 6, is it 6 o'clock? 6, 6.05 to 10. 6.05 to 10. Every morning, mm -hmm. Monday through Saturday. What happens at 6? Uh, there's five minutes of news. Oh, I'm sorry to that hear that. Thing. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm in quite a bit. Is no, that Goss? No, it's uh, Hugh McCoy at that hour. Oh, uh -huh. And then uh, later on, it's Goss. I'm interrupted three or four times. Well, there. Goss wouldn't, doesn't ever get up until like noon, does he? No, no. He, yeah, he tapes his news the day before. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I should, he, you're, you're not kidding. See, Goss was a captain with me in India, and it's easy that really? he can do this, you know. Yeah, but actually, he couldn't yeah. tape the news the day before because things might happen, you know. It would make no difference to, to, to Frank no, no, no difference at all. Uh, but I have a question to ask you, Dell. Please. Uh, well, cool. all right. Go ahead, Del. please. Uh, this is such a, a, an interesting home that you have. It's such an interesting show. You have such interesting friends. You've, you've done movies and whatnot. You have contacts. Why couldn't you sell this? Not that there's anything wrong with this FM station. It's very nice. Everything's mm -hmm. great. 
Have you tried to sell this to an AM station? I have already had uh, an AM station. Uh, now stay back. Don't get don't attack. No, you boys. Car- no. I, yeah. I was going to say carry it on both <coughs> media. Well, I did yeah. have uh, I did have an AM station call me one day and ask me about it, and that's as far as we went with it. Uh, KLAC. Oh, really? They, they uh-huh. called me and asked me about something. Yeah, well, they were I, always calling people. Well, I was there for a year, you know, on the big swindle <laughs> when we were the big five. Were you in town then? <laughs> yes, sure, sure. And Cooper? Oh, Alex Cooper was sure. alive. Alex, were you, where were you then? I, I was on KNX. That was my first year here. I came to town in 56. 56? Yeah. And you were was doing... I there? I guess I was there. Either yeah, there the or afternoon. you were at KABC. You were at no, one I've of the stations. No, I've never been. I was at KLAC. KLAC? I took, uh, whose place? Jim Amici's. That's right, uh-huh. sure. You were doing it, and uh, yeah. Dick Haynes and 1230 to 4 I was on, then I, I went to KTTV at 4.30 to 6. That was a real good you station, uh, KLAC at the time. At and that then, time it was. Then they yeah. got the echo in there, and it sort of... Uh, oh, bombed. You know what happened, really happened? Don Fetterson, you know who Don is? Yeah. yeah Don yeah, is a very a, successful man. Yeah. Now He's made himself a million dollars, I'd say, in the last year or yeah. two years. Anyway, that's give or take a million. <laughs> Uh, Don had been, up to that point of the echo chamber, their advisor, program advisor, and a capaci- capacity of, yeah. you know, the routine, yeah, yeah. Uh, telling him what the best formula would be and what to do. Well, Don took a trip and went away for, oh, a month or two. And in the meantime, some smarty got into Mort Hall. You know Mort? And some smarty got in there and sold him a bill of goods on this echo bit. Oh, and that was Don terrible. quit. Terrible. Yeah, it was just awful. But I'll tell you what I did, frankly. Uh, they paid pretty good money over there, like 500 a week, and you yeah. just sit there and do nothing. Yeah. Well, I took it for maybe the first six months pretty good, you know, looked pretty good. And I was doing two television shows a day, yeah. five days a week. Well, finally, I, I, it got so bad, the pressure got so bad for me and with the other two shows, I told Hall, I says, Mark, look, uh, and I was getting all kind of trouble from the front office. Look, don't say anything funny. Just get the commercials and the records on. See? He wouldn't let you do anything. Don't do anything. So oh, finally really? I went to him and I told him, I said, Mort, look, uh, let's be honest. I make This is a lot of money you're paying me. I'm not making, it yeah. may not be for somebody else, but for me, $2,000 a week is a month is pretty good money to sit yeah. and do records and don't have to learn any lines. He said, look, just, just mind your own business. Go on in there and read the commercials and play those records. I said, well, I, I, I'm, I'm not that type uh, we don't care about that. We don't care what type you are. We're selling you to the advertising agencies, and you're on the television. I says, well, why don't you go outside here, Mort, and the first guy that comes by that looks like he can breathe, grab him and bring him in. Now, he can do what I'm doing for 100 a week, and you got 400 for yourself. Is that how Peter you Potter know, got that's started? That's how Pete got grabbed out of <laughs> So at any rate, you know how, and he let me rock on like that for about three months and finally let me out. I couldn't take it anymore. Well, uh, I, I happened to run into a, a very nice situation. I was back east doing the show that I'm doing now. I was doing it back there for six years in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And uh, after I was there about four years, we were heard in New York, and this was to my advantage because the type show I did was a little bit different uh, with the oddball voices and whatnot and uh, the interviews and I started getting a few offers were real nice offers and at the time I was making five hundred dollars in Bridgeport Connecticut it's a lot a of week. money yeah for Bridgeport it's a lot yes it is uh, the manager of the station though surprisingly was making two thousand a week oh yeah well that's not a lot of money then <laughs> <laughs> no. and uh, that kind of money. I resented him the thief uh, being that sort of a guy no yeah. but uh, it was a very successful station we used to do uh, in 15 minutes as many as 12 13 commercials oh boy and the only way I got away with it was the fact that I did the voices in between Changing and them. kitted mm-hmm. uh, kitted the records and kitted mm-hmm. the uh, things so anyway to make a long story short <laughs> one day all of a sudden I get a phone call from CBS in Hollywood and this is Bob Sutton the program director of KNX and he says how would you like to come to the coast to Hollywood and I said let me think it over yes and uh, <laughs> and uh, the, the next thing I brought the whole caravan out here my wife that's uh, and uh, son at the time and my mother-in-law uh, it was sort of a package deal <laughs> and uh, it was your son at the time I see it was your <laughs> yes. daughter before I no and but I have a daughter but anyway that's yeah. getting all the subject. Yeah. but uh, came out and uh, the first thing I said, I said, now look, uh, I don't know you people. You evidently know me because you offered me the job. Now, am I going to be able to do exactly what I did in Bridgeport? And they said, exactly. We don't want you to change a lick. And they said, now you must understand you're taking over for a very popular fellow, Ralph Story, who's going back east to do the crooked $64,000 <laughs> challenge, yeah. which they knew was crooked, but they didn't want to wreck a good thing. Um, 
So he did a completely different type show, but we don't care. We want to go completely the other way. Ralph was big, lovable, wonderful mm. Ralph. He's the Ira Cook of KNX. Sort of, yeah, yes. I get you. Not right. quite as mossy, but mm. uh, yeah, not, he's it. a right. round ball. Yeah. And I was completely the other way with all the sharp, jagged edges. Mm. And uh, they said, let's go with it. And I said, okay, stand behind me. Let me do whatever I want. And they said, that's what we want. You go. Do what you did in Bridgeport. And we did. The first year, it was horrible. The <laughs> letters, oh boy. Uh, you know, go back where you come from, you idiotic imbecile. There was one phrase that always... Idiot. Yeah, I've been, I've been getting some of your fan mail. Right <laughs> dear idiot. They didn't even say dear. They just said idiotic <laughs> imbecile. Go back where you belong, you and those crazy voices and the gags and, and whatnot, and the drumming. That really bothered them, too. But the idiotic imbecile, I used to get that particular card every week. And uh, then one day they took a rating, and they found out Ralph Story's ratings were way up here, and mine were way down low, you know, and it kept on dropping. And like I had gotten down to the minus two routine. <laughs> You know, like nobody yeah. was listening to people knocking the show. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, the, the boss said, uh, what are you going to do about it? And I said, I'll try to get the rating up. So um, uh, the very next day I got on the air, and it was an old gag. I had heard somebody pull it years ago, and I decided I'd pull it. And I said, look, nobody has ever been called by the rating service. So why doesn't everybody at home call Pulse? And I had taken the time to look up, and I usually don't take time for anything, but I'd taken the time to look up on the phone book Pulse's telephone number in Beverly Hills. So I said, call this number. And it was Bradshaw or Webster, I forget what it was. And we'll get the rating up. It's a great idea. Everybody call them. And the people were calling in and saying, what a great idea. We're calling. We're going to get your rating up. And the boss came in at 7.30 in the morning. He comes running in. He says, you in the other imbecile. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it was right. You guys, you know. And that made me a little insecure. And uh, that's how Peter Potter got started. <laughs> Funny story. That's but, a funny story. Uh, the, the rating uh, uh, never went up. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still there. And no, I'm off. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. That's the mystery. Yeah, you're no, uh, the ratings have gone up. Yeah. Things are looking good. But the, the main point of the thing is that uh, KNX uh, has allowed me to do exactly what I want. Uh, we kid the commercials, we butcher a few here and there. Uh, but they've stood behind me, and we haven't, and I, I knock on wood, and I don't think there's any wood in this yeah, house. Yeah, there's a little over here. It's all money. Yeah, a little over here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's all cement slab. <laughs> yeah, with dollar bills That's in it. it yeah. uh, but uh, uh, what was it? You, you interrupted my thought. No, you were talking about the why they stand behind oh, you. Oh, yeah, because it's money. Yeah. Uh, they are making good money, and I'm making good money, and, and the sponsors are happy. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, they feel that uh, if there is a sponsor that will kick, and occasionally uh, we get one that uh, resented something, they will argue from my standpoint, which is very That's strange. Not yeah. many stations do this. No, that's right. And I remember Alex Cooper, <laughs> the late Alex Cooper, when uh -huh. I first came to town, he went, I guess, to Mort Hall uh -huh. and said, uh, uh, this fellow Crane's doing, I'd like to do the commercials. And uh, I don't know whether it was Mort or who it was, said Alex, look, in the same routine, I remember Alex was telling me one day we met, he says, how do you get away with it? Uh -huh. I can't. Yeah. Oh, boy, you know, they yeah. do the commercials, play the records, and that'd be nice, you know. Well, that's the way radio is now. Uh, yeah. What else did you want to talk about? And that's why doctors were born. <laughs> <laughs> it's 15 minutes Actually, before 12 Actually, uh, now to get back to your original question about the AM, do you have any good ideas for us? Let us know in case you... I was saying to my wife that... Uh, we ought to go home. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I said, I wonder how much he wants for the place. <laughs> um, With the microphones, we'll sell them. No, uh, no I, I was thinking it would be an awfully good show uh, to listen to um, on AM and FM. And uh, no, I, I don't have any particular ideas, but I was just wondering if you had approached uh, you yourself. Oh, the one. No, I have never. Mm. Have you approached KNX? No, no. They, they're, they've always been sort of like the Chicago Tribune to me, straight-laced. You're the only one that I've heard since Steve Allen yeah. that got away with that. And you have one guy on there that does this opinion, please. You ever hear him? Mel Baldwin. He I does this. Let me give you a little one of him. Much. Yeah, let me give you a little impression of him. <laughs> the guy calls up on the phone. He says, opinion, please, with a voice not quite as lively as that. Yeah. Opinion, please. And the guy says, I think the United States ought to be blown up and they ought to put a bomb in the White House and kill off everybody in the whole place and get it all of us communists to feel the same way about it. <laughs> he talks for like two minutes of his three. Baldwin comes in and says, <clears throat> now let me understand you. You mean that they should put the bomb, <laughs> they should put the bomb in the house and kill the president <laughs> and kill the other 30 people. I see, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, your time is up, sir. Thank you. And your opinion. Opinion, please. 
Well, that's the... The guy, the guy, I don't know how he... I get, is that the beauty of the show? You know, the funny thing is, Mel was brought down... I'd climb right to the microphone and go looking for this guy, you know, but he says, uh, no, in other words, to put the bomb in the White House or on top, which one was it that you wanted to The do? funny thing is, Mel Baldwin was originally brought down, as long as you brought up the subject of Mel, Mel was brought down to replace Steve Allen when Steve went back east to do the crooked $64,000 yeah, uh, challenge. And had a good thing going for him. Yeah, yeah. and uh, no, I don't know what crooked show he was being sent yeah. back for. But, uh, CBS is always reaching to the coast here and taking people back east to do crooked shows. Yeah. Uh, they're yeah. arranging one for me now. Uh, but anyway, when, when Alan went back, they got Bob Shepard or somebody to replace Steve Allen. I wasn't out here yeah, at the time. I was. Uh, I was, was one of those that tried for it. Yeah. Really? Uh, what happened? I don't know. Just well, anyway, Mel was one of them that finally was brought down from Seattle or somewhere. Mitchell and was the guy's name. Bob, Bob Mitchell. Mitchell. Yeah. I think he's yeah. changed it since then. Yeah, I met him a, the other night. an actor now or something. Yeah, yeah. I met him the other night. Very nice fellow. Mm -hmm. Has a voice Swelly. very similar to yours. Swell boy. Yeah, nice yeah. voice. Whiskey well, sort of a voice. Yeah. Anyway, Mel was brought down from up north uh, to do the show because he's a funny guy. So it ends up, that show went off, and American Airlines came in and brought uh, their uh, Music Till Dawn show with them and hired Mel <laughs> to do the show. And his entire job consists of, uh, good evening, this is Music Till Dawn. That's it. And then the music continues. And Mel's a funny the guy. only way to travel. He's a very funny guy. Uh, he wrote some routines for uh, Stan Freeberg's radio show. I don't know whether you remember the routine, uh, Old Man River where the network sensor comes in and says, you can't say old, get it off, we'll oh, offend the old yeah. people, say funny. elderly. Yeah, it's a uh, funny you know, routine. That's Mel's routine. Well, he's into a pattern now where you get MC at a funeral parlor, I'll tell you that. Well, but, but, uh, this is it. Uh, Mel always seems to end up on these programs where he has to use this uh, a fun funereal tone, I guess. Beautiful, he, beautiful. Uh, uh, good evening. Opinion, please. Yes, opinion, please. And, and that's it. Mel off the air talks like this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, in the hole, yeah, and I want to yeah. kiss him. You know? <laughs> 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 Except that he wears heels and he's much taller. Yeah. <laughs> His earrings kept getting in your eye, I know. Well, I hope you both be very happy. And <laughs> say hello. Yeah, there you're coming Say hello, Mrs. Yes. Bowen, for me when you go. Yes, all right. Now, uh, what were you going to say? I was just going to say that I uh, only once in a while do I catch you because I'm not fortunate enough to, to get out on the freeway with the people going to work in that mad rush. Listen at home. Uh, I don't get up that early, you see. That was the point. Only when I go to make a television film, which lately hasn't been too frequent. Uh, I made one know. a couple of weeks ago. Did you? Yeah, I'm Let's not allowed to do that. television. I am not allowed to do television. This is a ridiculous thing. They put into my contract when I was back east. Actually, what loused me up is the CBS contract. The very first clause says you're not allowed to read the rest of the contract. That'll do it. <laughs> and uh, so at, at the end of the contract, it said you will not do television unless we give you the approval. And we're not going to give <laughs> what they have. And we're not going to give it in real small print. I thought it was trademark. You know, they, they had written. That's told music company. They had drawn lines yeah. around it. Anyway, I signed this thing quick, you know, because a lot of money, and I figured, yeah. oh boy. And I've been out here four years, and every time somebody calls up and says, Crane, we think that there might be something in television for you. Can you do it? I have to say no. Then finally, uh, about six months ago, and I make this very short now because it is Sorry. getting late and we're almost... We're 20 minutes over time. Don't worry. You're going, <laughs> we're going to go right on into your show. I, uh, I received a phone call from uh, Max... Uh, Senate. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Pardon me, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. That's I don't usually, I'm not usually ever funny with my guests. Uh, I'm not usually ever funny, but go on. I've heard the show. You got the last uh, one? <laughs> no, no, you're, you are right. funny. But yes, Max so uh, Shulman, oh, yes, uh, writer yes. of Dobie Gillis and all those yeah. things, he called up and said, Bob, I'm a listener from back east when I used to live in Westport. I used to listen to you in Bridgeport and whatnot. Would, would you be available to do a new show? We're going to shoot a pilot and whatnot. And I said, who's the pilot, you know? <laughs> and it was just a bad joke, and I won't go yeah, any further. It's all right. It wasn't bad enough. Uh, <laughs> so they hired me to shoot a pilot. <laughs> no, so I went over there, and I talked to them, and I said, look, I'd love to do it. Could you change my name? Because I'm not allowed to do it as Bob Crane. They said they'd rather. <laughs> <laughs> so then he so said... why don't we do a Condolus and Grant? Go ahead. He yeah. said, uh, get your teeth cat. Teeth yeah. Um... No, he said, uh, why, why not? What is this stupid rule? And it is a stupid rule. Yeah, it is. I'm yeah. saying that it is a stupid rule that doesn't allow me to do television. That's Marvin Quackmire's voice, friends. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not allowed to do that on my show in the morning. Yeah. I have to, you know, I, well, get around, but don't talk about your personal things. Yeah. 
Um, I've told you about my family. Then they don't stand behind you all the way, do they? Uh huh. Now it comes out. You really no, they're hate terrible. CBS. They're and terrible. I, it's it's w- a terrible place to work. Back to no. WCCO if you're not they, careful. They won't allow me to do television. So he calls up and he says, you know, we'd like to do, shoot the pilot. It's a funny thing and I know you'll be fine. It's the lead in the thing. You're going to be harassed, husband. You live in Westport, Connecticut. You're a commuter. Your wife spends a lot of money and whatnot. Can you think you can do it? I said, I'd love to do it. Uh, but I can't, you know, so they, I go away. He calls two days later, he says, look, this will not tie you up three days a week, which the other would have. This is the co-star, like in the thing. You will be the second husband. Now, this will tie you up only six out of the first 13. I went, to, you know, the boss, yeah. ah, do you, don't you read the contract, you know, yeah. So finally that, down the drain. So finally he calls up and he says, Bob, we wrote another thing in him. Can you at least shoot the, <laughs> can you shoot the pilot with us? That's all, just do the first one. Can you one. come over and say hello? You know? <laughs> just do the first, we just want to see what you look like on film. Yeah. So I went into the boss and he said, all right, as long as this does not commit us, go ahead, shoot the pilot. And I shot the pilot and it's a one, it's a 45 second bit where I'm, it's the same, <laughs> same you know, really, uh, boom, boom, and you get them out of there quick and I'm yeah. under no obligation. Uh, you know, and uh, whatnot, and uh, th- they never sold the pilot. And that's the way it stands now. <laughs> <laughs> See, they could have let you make the whole thing and pick up some more bucks. I make money. I'm, I'm making a comeback from pilots, you know. I'm <laughs> I, that's, so that's all I've done. And I, yeah. uh, Joan Harrison, who hired uh, uh, Joby, to, uh, I keep on thinking of Doby Gillis, everything I did. Jo- <laughs> Joby yeah. Baker. Doby. Do- Doby Baker. Joby did, did a thing for Hitchcock, uh-huh. uh, a thing a, a few weeks ago, which was real great. And I had been uh, called. Now, these are the type of people that call in this town, which is the great thing about working in Hollywood. You get some great opportunities, as you know, which you couldn't uh-huh. get elsewhere. I met Joan Harrison. She says, I'm a listener. I'd like to use you in a film. They finally hired Dick York uh-huh. to do it. And it was a thing, a very funny script about 20 years from now, how when people get so old, they're, they're going to be killed. That was great. The, there's going to be an agency to kill the old people. It's a funny thing. Yo, that is funny. <laughs> <laughs> Let's kill off all the old people. <laughs> so Joan Harrison calls me and says, come over. I want to meet you. You're, you know, I think you're a funny guy. And I go over and she says, you're right for it. And I said, right for what? And she says, it's got to be a light character. We don't want this to seem somber and whatnot. And <laughs> kill them off with a smile. She, right? hasn't, she hasn't told me the script yet. And I says, I'm your boy, Razzle Dazzle. You know, I'll get right in there and I'll really punch. Uh, and so she says, now, this is the script, just made for you. <laughs> you kill old people. <laughs> <laughs> and I look at it, why, you know, kill old people? I'm killing them in the morning now, you know, <laughs> with our listeners. So kill a few young ones. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, they wouldn't let me do it. The CBS said, don't do it. You know. I would quit and go to work for us, that's all. We can get you on out here. The they won't let me do know. anything. Yeah. But anyway, that's yeah. the problems of working in, in this town. I wish I could do my show from my home. You just have. <laughs> oh, we, we've taped this for you for Monday. Uh, Bob, we would like very much to thank you, as we have our other guests, for being nice enough to spend a little time with us. And I'm glad that you like the house. And there is an eating area here. At any time that you like to where bring is, your lovely the, wife, the, the let out. <laughs> the let out is right in the back there. You can't. You, and we know the thing that's. The, I know what you mean. What do they call that thing? A toilet. Oh, that. Well, I wouldn't. Mean, I wouldn't mean. I meant the let out part of it. Uh, is, is, that a, is that a northern expression? Is that the uh, the let out? I don't yeah. know. The no, no, it isn't I didn't, that. No. Yeah. Well, anyway, we were going to say thank you. Imagine somebody tuning in late and saying, <laughs> "This is wonderful, they, a plumbing show." And nobody, <laughs> yeah, nobody knows where the toilet is. <laughs> Bob, thank you so very much for being with us. A lot of good luck. Thank you, you uh, Peter. It's all right. <laughs> no, really, I, I want to say, uh, uh, all kidding aside, I, I want to make this quick. On behalf of my wife, you have a beautiful home. Thank you, And Bob. it's very seldom that a radio performer gets to appear on another radio performer's show. Thank you very much, Mayor. It's a pleasure, sir. Mayor is very nice. Mayor of Tarzana, ladies and gentlemen. Thank Dr. You. Bob Crane. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call him every day or so and invite him to have a big part in a pilot I'm doing because I know he can't take it. <laughs> I'm going to say, i got a part for you, Bob. It's tremendous. I dig you every morning on the freeway. It's beautiful. How did we get through that whole interview without mentioning Whitting Hill? You notice how he stayed clear of it? You notice he didn't even think about it or bring it up? You know. Now he's thought of something. I'm leaving. Oh, come back, Bob. Well, we have run over, and I must apologize to the people paying the bill up to midnight. Yeah. I would like to thank you nice people at home. You've certainly been wonderful. Frank Hollingsworth, you have been a doll, as usual. You're fired. And, Bob, and Don Pedretti, thank you so very much. 
See, we got Bob Crane for you boys, right? They're fans of yours, Bob. I've tried to tell them differently, but that's the way it goes. Anyway, sincerely, thanks to John Forsythe, thanks to Lyle Talbot, Joe B. Baker, Joni Blackman, and, of course, our friend, Mr. Bob Crane of KNX. <laughs> Listen to his program on Monday, friends, at 6.05, immediately following the first interruption. <laughs> and un <laughs> until uh, next uh, time again, which will be tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. This is Del Moore. Thank you very much, and thank Jerry Lewis for helping us. For the, I think he helped us for the first half hour. And this is Del Moore reminding you that tomorrow is worship day for some people. Makes no difference where you go. You'll never pay the good Lord everything you owe him, but you can make a down payment somewhere tomorrow. Good night, everybody. <laughs>